Hi, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, it's great to be back on the microscope, and I couldn't wait to have another look at the fracture sample. I have some amazing, absolutely amazing images uh, to share with you that I took uh, last August and September um, at Alan's uh, Magic Sound Lab on his SEM, which he kindly let us use. And um, really, I wanted to open something out, which I have... Um, been thinking about for over two years now and I shared a bit about this um, at uh, Sochi in October 2018 and this was my Sochi Seek and Share presentation you can see it on our YouTube channel and at one point I shared this uh, uh, image which I drew in the first weeks of January 2018 and essentially it was what at that stage I understood to be causing many of the observations that we had seen um, and that I had witnessed uh, in the Lion and in Nova and in Echo and so forth. Uh, and essentially it is a uh, heart, I've cut it in half here, but it's a torus and uh, it's uh, got a toroidal motion here and a poloidal motion here and they combine to make it spin round and spin round like this. And this creates uh, a vortice in here and a vortice out there. Uh, and there's uh, some sort of field going on here which is able to pull this through the um, uh, fluid or medium that it's traveling through. And uh, because there's more over here, it actually travels in this direction, even though it's actually sucking things in from this point. And uh, I talked about how uh, the evidence would suggest that something like a black hole analog was being able to be created by whatever is doing the Lenner process. And I also uh, noted, and I'll, I'll go into this here, but this specific slide, I was referring to how this structure, I believed, allowed these very large macro structures to form in the um, uh, aluminium samples that some of them that we have from John Hutchison. So as essentially this, if you can imagine it, is rotated around there and this in a bit here uh, is pulling here and this is effectively uh, the event horizon of uh, this cone uh, as it's going in and you can see it's actually a, a round section here this has been cut in half the whole sample was cut in half and you can see it's a round section here but it goes into this cone and effectively that is the shape of that bit that goes in there and as I've talked about in previous videos this travels in this direction um, because uh, what's happening is uh, there's uh, you can see that in the uh, sort of hydrodynamic video that I took in Suhas Raukar's lab in early 2017 um, uh, using the sprites in the ultrasonic tank. And so that, that's a good analogue for this. And as I said in a previous video, these things can split and rejoin together. And that was, uh, I, I didn't need to see anything else but that slowed down uh, video to see how these can split and rejoin. And then uh, it became clear that uh, um, this is something that uh, uh, Kenneth Scholzers had observed uh, with exotic vacuum objects. Anyway, so the reason I really want to share something with you today is to talk about um, this thing that I'm saying that the material is taken from here and it's kind of forced and lensed and, and spun and, and focused into the center point. Uh, and actually there is kind of like um, a coherent matter that structures this toroid. Um, but uh, the, the, its interaction with electrons is able to uh, basically make matter... Uh, uh, turn into what appears to be a liquid phase. It's not molten, but it's, it loses its um, uh, electron bond strength and, and material is able to be ripped into uh, uh, th these uh, structures. Uh, and so I just wanted to show you some evidence, um, both from other authors, uh, but principally because of the history of... Um, uh, uh, the uh, work of several authors, um, starting with Tesla. But I, I have said, and I am firm on this in this belief, that uh, the work of Winston Bostick here reported uh, in 19, I think 57 it is, and I'll give all the links to these documents, um, uh, is he claims it's inspired by um, Hans Alphen and Langmuir from the 1920s, 
But I believe this work is uh, uh, also, um, uh, it's, it's, it, it was inspired by the work of Tesla. And uh, it's kind of like not mentioned, but anyway. Um, so uh, I just a couple of points in this. Uh, I, I shared this, I think, in May the 6th. Uh, uh, when I discovered it, uh, May the 6th uh, last year in 2019. And he's talking about producing these plasmoids, which are in this orientation. And uh, he also produced plasmoids uh, that uh, come out of two electrodes and then they self lose. This is a different method to the way that uh, Ken Shoulders did it. Uh, so the plasmoid is, is like this and they kind of expand out. And then he's saying that the, uh, if you put it into a gas, uh, you have an acceleration here and it starts to twist. And the twists can then come together. And if you get two of them, um, they form these little, little shapes here. And, and the work of Sam Vatimova, I think, is, uh, describes how uh, strange radiation tracks might be caused by um, things that are these kind of shapes. Um, but then if you get two of these twists uh, coming together, they can then link their magnetic loops and they form a loop like this. And then these can then go on uh, to twist and form plasmoids uh, in this kind of shape. Um, and so th this kind of all makes some logic sense. He also says that if they twist and they come and they group into, these might be the beads on a chain, they may not be, um, but uh, they can group together like this and then their, their magnetic lines uh, join together and then you end up with, it's the same thing pointing in two directions. And this is something that I will talk about uh, later and it's it's very important and feeds into so much else um, but there's a couple of pieces of text in here I just want to read before I, I go forward and I've got a, some images here I think it is so this is the posting on our Facebook um, so uh, there's a couple of screen grabs on that the difficulty is that in a low density gas energy Energized ions and electrons do not collide with one another often enough to raise the temperature greatly. Instead, they lose their energy in collisions with uh, uh, the walls of the container. But as everyone knows, who has followed uh, the events knows, a, a, a beautiful solution to this problem has been found. It is the magnetic bottle within the magnetic field which swing, uh, swings the electrified particles in circular orbits. The plasma can be temporarily be held in a thrall as tightly as by any material container. The electrons and atoms collide only with one another and the plasma becomes fully ionized. So this is uh, kind of his description about how you do this. Uh, and it's actually caught in its own magnetic bottle uh, when it's in the uh, toroid form. There's a couple of other clips here. Head on break. If you have coming together, they break into fragments, but even these fragments seem to behave as uh, entities. In other words, we appear to be dealing with bodies which have strong powers of self-organization and preservation. We find these powers still more strikingly demonstrated when we go on to further experiments. So this is saying in 1957, published in 1957, that these things can uh, make and break and they can come back together again. Uh, and this is what Shoulders described. So they can join forces. And then this is the closing uh, argument in his paper from 1957. We can look upon the combination of plasma uh, and magnetic field as a kind of self-shaping putty. Perhaps study of the forms assumed by this putty may help us understand, to understand configurations such as the stars and galaxies. It may also throw light at the other end of the scale on the construction of the fundamental particles such as the electron, the proton, mesons and neutrinos. They too may be made of self-organizing putty, a putty composed of the electromagnetic field and its own gravitational forces which working together create the bodies uh, we know as particles. So it became very clear to me from what I was looking at that these things can self-organize and I didn't see any real reason why they could be restricted to any scale. And uh, of course, you always have to be aware when you realize something that someone's going to have thought about it before and probably have seen something similar that would point in that direction. Well, he's publishing and saying just that in 1957. So, so Bostic, uh, that work was hanging, hanging out there for, for a while. And uh, um, uh, essentially, uh, what happened with um, uh, uh, Ken Shoulders he actually retook up the work of Ken Bostick 
but only because of John Hutchison uh, with uh, his uh, technology. And what was John Hutchison doing? Well, he was trying to replicate the work of Nicholas Tesla. So I believe that Nicholas Tesla should get the credit uh, uh, for being the inspiration that led on to all of this. But I think the real point in modern times has to be given credit to John Hutchison uh, uh, because without John Hutchison's work, the work of Bostick would not have been explored further and that would not have given us the exotic vacuum object. Anyway, um, now I, I want to now talk about this uh, uh, article that's from 2009 from the National Research Nuclear University in Moscow. And I, I've linked to this and discussed it in the past, but this is a bit like a Suhas Ralkar electric discharge in, into water. And here you can see it is making these toroid forms. And uh, you, there's another one here. This is kind of like a white one. And here we've got another black, if I can get that in focus, we've got another black toroid there. And there's a bit better look at it here. Now you can see it seems to be relatively fat. The striking thing that I see in this, and in the one that you see uh, a little further up, if I can uh, get to the right place, this one here is that behind it you have this incredibly bright plasma and you have this thing that's been born in this gaseous plasma environment yet the light is not going through. Now, Shoulders did say that these exotic vacuum objects can get to the point of being as dense as solids. So then you could consider that the light is not going through. But if it is uh, some sort of coherent matter as it would uh, seem to be, uh, maybe the vacuum in there is in such a way that light cannot get through. Whatever's happening is you've got a bright bit behind here. And the important thing here is here you see the donut and here you see the light in the middle and around the edges. This means that light is able to get through that center bit. Um, it's actually saying that this really is a donut form and you can see it very, very clearly here. You've got light going through the center bit. Okay, so this is uh, some uh, um, condensed plasmoid slide uh, from um, uh, the, one of the present, uh, Lutz Yeitner, uh, who presented at ICCF uh, 22 and, uh, in, in Italy. And uh, I want to draw your attention to this, this slide here particularly. And I want to talk about this uh, uh, from Ken Shoulders because uh, we're going to give the credit where credit is due in every single case. And so uh, Ken Shoulders showing this. Now, I don't know what you see when I see this, but um, I, I see something very, very specific. Now, uh, if you can imagine that uh, this wonderful looking tasty donut, which I've been trying to avoid eating, is our uh, Bogdanovich Taurus that you saw in that plasma discharge with the light shining through as you can see the light coming there and it's doing the twisty turny thing that uh, I, I suspected it might be doing in my drawing that I did at the beginning of 2018 and this then goes and hits the surface of the material what you're going to do now as I if I take you back there I am saying that this is going around in this direction, in this direction, and it travels in this direction. Why? Because it's tractoring through the material here. Now we hit a surface. We hit a surface here. And what's happening is material, uh, the electron bonds are being disrupted here, and the material is going into what looks like a liquid, but it's not really a liquid, and it's getting pulled round, and it, some of it gets pulled round, and it gets slapped back into the, the center again. And it kind of gets slapped and focused. And so this, for me, is what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing a donut. And, and you can imagine that all these bits are the, 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 the protons and the neutrons and the electrons. And they're all getting swept around. And around the edge, it kind of gets piled up. Because uh, some of it becomes entrained in the structure of the um, exotic vacuum object. And some of it... Uh, just gets left because it's kind of slightly outside of the field of influence. And so um, this is maybe, this this is a fat one, like a fat donut like this, but they can actually form much wider rings. And, and in, in this case, the, I think this one, I can't recall, but I think this was like 200 microns across. They, they seem to have these very specific diameters. And, and you know, with this type of one, you can even see these cracks on here. 
this is uh, one that's uh, on the uh, 10 yen coin that we exposed to a Mars gas. Very, very same similar structure. Again, this is about 200 microns across. It's a very, very classic scale. And we have this in extreme detail. Uh, and I'm going to do a whole other video about this, uh, about the elements and the change of elements across the boundary and how that relates to Matsumoto's findings from the 90s and, and so on. Uh, now, there's other cases. So here we have lion. And so if you can imagine what's happened is the donuts come out of the core of the lion. This is on the inside of the quartz sheath and it's hit there and uh, it's left the, the light shining through the middle. In fact, it, what it hasn't done, it hasn't, hasn't affected the quartz uh, on that point. And so, oh, that's good. Um, what I will do is I'm going to go through so many of the different experiments that you've seen over the last couple of years and look at the samples. Uh, it, it's, it's almost boring. You just find these things everywhere. Shoulders was right. If, if, you, if you look, you'll find them. And so uh, I just want to go through a couple of things here. So uh, this is what uh, these, this track system that uh, was made by uh one keith fredericks and I'll, I'll give it as usual i'll give all the links to the uh presentations in the description of the video but this was done by keith fredericks and uh he created these ones and again you see uh sometimes you see it's just black now what i think about those ones is it's when the donuts come for whatever reason in at this angle maybe it's bounced off some other surface and come in here and so it's throwing material on the outside and it's kind of basically trying to suck material on it on the inside so it's kind of like throwing and this is you know so it's doing that and then on these cases it's it's kind of like this way around and if it's a negative it would be the other way around if you if you think about it so uh, it depends whether this is a positive or negative it says it's the the the, the kodak uh, emulsion so but whatever way w one way is actually allowing the light to expose it and one way is basically sucking it out and throwing the light around the outside interestingly mm, that's very good um you can see that this here is a 460 microns okay so i'm going to go back to uh this one and i want to show you some work of matsumoto so here you see the same thing. So you've got the, the spots in the middle uh, and these rings. This is slightly geometric around the outside. And I'm going to be able to show you this on so many of the samples that seem to be pro producing Lena. They're just everywhere. So here, look. In this case, you've got the black spot. And in this case, you've got the, the white ring. You've got the material around the outside. So it's p piling the material around the outside and it's throwing it down into the middle. Um, so you get to see these absolutely everywhere. So once you know what you're looking for, um, you, you know that you've got the active agent going on in your uh, Lena. Then I want to show you this thing which he calls uh, white holes here. Um, and we, we're going to see something similar. Uh, now... Um, what I've said for a long time uh, is that, uh, and, and what we're looking at here is this other Hutchison sample here. Uh, this is made in 2007, same as the other one I've just shown you, and we're looking at this end here. Um, I asked people to see what, uh, I shared this image and I asked uh, uh, the crowd to say, what do they see in this? And uh, Musical Hemispheres spotted this ring with a spot in the middle, this ring with a spot in the middle. So here we have it. And th this is, you see this characteristic everywhere, that the light elements tend to be on the outside and the heavier elements are in the middle. So, so the concept was that I had at the beginning of 2018 um, uh, uh, was that material um, uh, was, uh, let's go back here, was effectively coming in and hitting here and in this spot you could have material material aggregating and if it was bosonic it could aggregate and aggregate and aggregate so you, you, you've got some sort of denatured material here which can also settle down and form actual matter and then also you've got this target zone and the target zone is also accentuated if if it's hitting a surface so if our our donut here 
it's come up and hit a surface and it's grabbing this stuff and it's throwing it then into the center, you can have some sort of uh, uh, um, heavy matter produced in here. And if you go back to uh, that uh, presentation here, which was part of the same Sochi presentation, what I'm saying is the heavy material you get in these holes and it actually you've got some of the spheres that get produced doink 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 and and i think this was nickel and this was iron and iron uh, and then you also get these uh, geometric structures formed and this is a, a, a rhombic dodecahedron but you can uh, get other um, sort of standard kind of crystal forms uh, being created and so um uh, what i want to show you uh, now is it now that i want to show you uh, I just want to say this is the lion, uh, this is Keith Fredericks, and this is uh, from Bostick's paper, uh, and uh, that is uh, where I got the Bogdanovich work. So uh, what I want to show you now is this, and, and this is actually a couple of photos that I took today looking around this, uh, this sample called Fracture. And like I say, I have some incredible elemental images to share with you. I've already shared one, but it's just un unimaginably beautiful what you're seeing because you can see the interaction, the sort of quantum coherent interaction uh, between uh, these, uh, uh, these exotic vacuum objects. But what I want to focus on here is this, this EVO structure um, uh, and what it's doing, and, and, and also the fact that they just tend to be in these uh, uh, particular sizes. So um, I'm going to zoom into this one first. So uh, whether this is clear, I don't know. But th these are the smaller size. So they typically are 20 microns. And so if I uh, fade this thing out here, you can see here, here we have uh, the area which is bunched up on the outside and you've got a raised bit in the middle and that's like where an Evo, the donut, has come in and it's hit the surface like that. Um, and there are quite a few on here. Uh, there's uh, some here, there's some there, there's some there. And these are very similar to the X-ray ones uh, that you have on, um, uh, on the work of uh, Matsumoto. So... Um, I can actually sort of just drag this, uh, where is it, 20 micron thing around. Uh, and so you can see we've got a 20 micron one there. Uh, we've got a 20 micron one there. We, we've got a 20 micron one over there and so on. So there's another one over there. <laughs> so uh, these are uh, the smaller ones and they are all over this uh, sample. I'm going to put that back where it was. Um, then the sort of uh, mid-scale ones are uh, 50 microns. Uh, so here we go. So they're quantized. And this looks a bit like the white holes. And, and you know, I will show other examples, I think, for, uh, from uh, Amaza vibrator testing, where we saw both the, the earlier ones that we've just seen, very similar to the ones um, that Matsumoto took. And... Uh, uh, so what am I looking for? Oh yes, I'm talking, looking for the Matsumoto paper. So uh, yeah, if you look at Matsumoto here, the, these kind of white, what he calls white holes, um, uh, this is the same kind of structure you, you've got going on here. Uh, and again, this is, this is in the, the 50 micron scale uh, spots. Then um, I have uh, another one here, which is 50 microns, uh, but these are the ring and the spots. So if I turn those off, you'll see that this has a, a sort of a, kind of a bit of a geometry on it. Um, the ring and the spot there, the ring and the spot there, and you've got a slight, slight bit of geometry going on there, and uh, very, very clear uh, hexagonal geometry here. So these are um, 50 micron ones. And so we've got the bo both kinds of those there. Then uh, I'm going to go up to the next scale, which is the 200 micron ones. And we've got a, we've got a head-on collision here. So our, our donut has come in and just hit the aluminium here. Now, it, it is likely that it's being created within the material and it's coming out and then it's coming back in. Or it's being generated on the surface of the material in, in the boundary. 
So if I just fade this out, uh, you will see. So again, we, you've got this kind of slightly geometrical outside. And you can see how it's kind of like scraping and moving it around. Scraping and moving it around, it piles it up in the center. You're going to see this on so many things I'm going to show you. This, I'm just so excited to share this lot with you. <laughs> oh dear, so exciting. Um, so here we go. That's it away. That's it there. So these, these are the kind of 200 micron scale ones. And Matsumoto saw ones at 200 microns. Uh, here's another one, and in fact, what, what's happened here is the the uh, donut has come in from this angle. Now, uh, I will share these images. I want to get the video out first, but if you look at the description to the video, I will add uh, links to all the images probably um, on Monday. But the, the, if you can imagine our donuts here, and it's grabbed the material, it's thrown it around it, uh, up here. You can actually see the curve of, of the donut in here, and you're going to see this over and over again with some other things I, I'm so eager to show you. So um, again, this is in the uh, 200 micron scale, like the previous one I showed you. And then this one here is a uh, Daddy-O one. And uh, I, I really like this one because it's actually, you can, you can see the lines coming out. And, and actually Winston Bostick observed similar things to this. Uh, and so uh, you, you, you've, you've got it it's literally scraping out, you've got the pile up on the edge, and it's grabbing stuff and throwing it down in the middle. Um, and so if I uh, actually, I can fade that in and out. And so th this one is a 460 micron uh, scale one, and it's quite uh, weird because uh, I think it's not here, but... Um, if you look at the work of Keith Fredericks, here we go. What scale is his big one? It's 460 microns. They, they, they really are quantized in these different sizes. And it's, it's, it's a bit weird to think about it, but they are. Um, but apparently you can split them up and they fragment and they can go about their merry way uh, raising all kinds of, of mischief or something, something like that that, that uh, Ken Shoulder said. So here we go. So essentially what you're what I've done there is I measured the kind of center center point. It's kind of like the area that it's affecting. Uh, and it, you know, aluminium is just so good for creating these things, it would seem, uh, based on the work of uh, um, uh, John Hutchison. So actually what I've got here is the camera live, and unfortunately I just I jogged it. Um, so what I, I wonder is if I can actually move this. Uh, Oh dear, and I need to refocus it. Anyway, oh, holding camera one hand. Okay, let's let me see if I can refocus that. Okay, there we go. So this this is the other side. So you can imagine that this is scoop, but it's kind of out of frame. So yeah, um, I'm so excited to show you this, and um, uh, I did tell people to get this book, which I uh, I read on uh, the 23rd of January, uh, and uh, the, the the single paragraph that absolutely stunned me in this more than anything. I put a couple of notes on it, um, but uh, uh, you know, hopefully some of you got this by now. But it was this, and it's on on page 155. Uh, let's see if I can get this in focus. And uh, it's here, and it says, Moreover, if the residual ions circulate around the EV vortex ring, the ring symmetry would tend to aim its center hull straight at the nucleus, and the ions circulating through the center would be aimed directly at the nucleus with further force. Many cold fusion researchers have observed the transmutation anomaly, blah, blah, blah. So when I read this, it's kind of like I didn't have to read any further. Essentially, you got the ring in the spot. Um, hence, hence my wedding ring. Um, uh, the ring in the spot, and you've got the material traveling around, and it's colliding. Uh, and anyway, he may have meant that. I don't know whether he meant that, but certainly that's what I believed at the beginning of 2018 had to be going on. 
and uh, so th that's why I um, uh, I uh, drew this in um, uh, and shared it in Sochi in October 2018. So yeah. Um, now the I, I went on to say how these can cluster. These can cluster in many ways. They can join forces and and and, and become bigger ones. Um, uh, in in future presentations, I'm going to talk more about how the basic one forms. How uh, um, uh, different elements can trigger the production of the basic one that can then cluster. They they quantize into various sizes, and then they can do various things uh, up to you know much much bigger scales. Um, but essentially, you have a donut, and something's going on that means light can't get through that. And it was made out of gases and vapors and plasmas. But light cannot travel through that. So that was, you can see that clearly demonstrated here by Bogdanovich on the uh, uh, nuclear research uh, um, university's website, M E A P H L. Um, and here are some examples of where the, the structures have come and hit a surface. Uh, maybe this is a backside hit and this is a front side hit. Uh, and so you see these structures. Like I say, I'm going to uh, give you huge detail on this and uh, um, what the elements are across the boundary as it goes and tie that in. So essentially what I wanted to say uh, is Thank you very, very much to all those um, that have helped us um, visit these different researchers and do this research over the years. I can say that this work would never have been possible had it been uh, not been for the donors, which there are many of you. We have some very ambitious plans for this year. And if you want to help realize them, because we are a little bit short, <laughs> very short at the moment, um, and if you want us to help us realize those, um, uh, uh, there will be a, a description of how you can uh, support the project, uh, where you can go to support the project in the uh, description of the video. Uh, but uh, really, I, I, I'm very, very interested in your comments, uh, what you think about what you're seeing here. I'll bring up some of these other ones. Um, and uh, whether you think uh, I, I, I'm seeing something that's real or whether I, you think I'm seeing something that's not real. Um, but I think that the uh, uh, exotic vacuum object core structure is a torus. And uh, I will show you unimaginable amounts of evidence to that effect. And then um, uh, as I sneaked out the other day, um, in one of uh, a Facebook posting that some other analysis from this particular sample would appear to show uh, quantum coherence, condensate nature uh, and interference of that. Uh, and so um, uh, that is creating some very, very interesting uh, effects on a macro scale. And... Uh, I will then come to talk about uh, how that could be forming and uh, what is going on and, and, and the combination of things as to why you get fusion and fission and transmutation. And uh, I will also look at some of um, uh, uh, Matsumoto's work where he's literally saying that you get this dense form of hydrogen uh, and the dense form of hydrogen can even cause uh, the decay of um, uh, uh, nucleons and this was all done in the 1990s and uh, I, I really have to thank John Hutchison uh, for his uh, gift to the world in letting uh, samples like this out of his clutches uh, and, uh, and uh, you guys uh, out there that have helped support this project uh, for enabling um, the research uh, and, and uh, study of the work. So thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.